Air Station New Orleans is one of the most expansive and complex areas in the United States of America. It covers five different states, the uh, Western Rivers, Mississippi River. We operate as one of the busiest all rotary wing air stations in the United States. Our main mission is here primarily search and rescue. However, we end up doing a lot of uh, medevacs as well, flying out to uh, cruise ships, individuals in distress. We also fly things such as ports and waterways, coastal security. We'll go out for marine environmental protection. Offshore gas and oil industry, shipping industry, and then there's the uh, recreational boaters. And we have a pretty prolific fishing industry. At any given time, there's a lot more people on the water here than any other unit that I've been to. This unit's always busy. You could come in uh, one day and uh, doing a training, a hoisting flight out in the middle of Lake Pontchartrain, in the middle of the hoisting flight, get a call to go pick up someone who's lost, someone who's injured. You never really know what you're gonna get. This year, a lot of our cases have been a little bit more dynamic. This past year, I've personally been on five to six medevacs. Last year's pace seemed epic as far as the number of cases that we normally get one or two big ones, and we had five or six. So in 2019, we had three hurricanes and one tropical storm. Hurricane Barry brought a wind and rain event, flooding in some areas. Quite a few people were stuck on porches and homes in their houses with the, the quickly rising water. We had two crews that went out and conducted some rescue missions. We saved, I think it was up to 18 people, several dogs and cats. Tropical Storm Imelda followed shortly after Hurricane Barry. There was flooding throughout the area, probably knee deep, maybe up to hip deep. We were sent out to evacuate double amputee, trapped in her home and needed to get out from the floodwaters. And we medevaced uh, several people that were in, in distress. Most of us were sort of winding down from some of the, the previous tropical storms and hurricanes and uh, Doreen came in and swept towards the Bahamas. So we sent an aircraft to the East Coast to support. We also had some of our officers who deployed in order to, to coordinate rescue efforts there. One of the more uh, challenging cases that we get in general is hoisting from sailing vessels. Uh, it'd be very problematic with the, uh, the high mass and then all the cables and sails. And so we had a 35-foot uh, sailing vessel that was disabled pretty far offshore in the Gulf of Mexico. An eight-year-old girl, her father, and their dog. The sailing vessel was particularly difficult uh, due to the fact that the sea state was really high. It was about six foot swells, 30 knot gusts of wind. So the sailboat was definitely rocking. Um, the mass was swinging unpredictably. The crew actually had to put the rescue swimmer down into the water. He, uh, he swam to the sailing vessel, managed to climb on board. The daughter right here did a cannonball into the water with the dog and, uh, and they picked him up with a basket that way. So with the Tiger Lily, which was a commercial shrimp and vessel, they called in distress that they were taken on water. It was in the middle of the night with low ceilings and low visibility because of the fog. So it's, it's a challenge just getting out to the people. And then once um, you're on scene, uh, there's a whole new set of challenges. If you can imagine outriggers um, just on either side of it with nets, you know, there's really no suitable hoisting area. So they put the rescue swimmer in the water, who climbed up onto the vessel and then uh, grabbed a, a female passenger with her dog and they got in a basket and hoisted them out of the water that way. At a certain point I saw how much water was coming over the side of the vessel and had to make the tough decision to, that the vessel was unsavable and to get the two people off the boat. And then you can imagine lines tangled everywhere and they're trying to get to the raft that's tangled up with this very quickly sinking boat and, uh, and it's just, just kind of a horrific scene that had, had to take action very very quickly. And then lately, this last year, we had two or three cases of aviation mishaps, which is kind of unique. So I got here this summer, and actually uh, my first case uh, was this seaplane crash. It was actually my first duty. This particular charter plane had three people in, on board. Uh, we came up on what appeared to be a fuselage of an aircraft, as well as uh, oil in the water from the aircraft crash. When our crews got on scene, they found, unfortunately, the pilot uh, incapacitated they recovered them and began CPR and then transported them. Our flight mechanic and rescue swimmer were providing CPR all the way in route. It, 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 was, it was hard 
knowing that there was still someone out there, but we knew that the pilot was in severe condition and we needed to get him to the nearest hospital as soon as possible. We dropped off the pilot and the other survivor. We actually had to get another helicopter uh, with more fuel. So uh, it, it took a whole team effort for, uh, to get us out back on scene to locate the third survivor. Putting a helicopter out to rescue somebody with the air crew of four doesn't happen magically. Um, there are support folks here. From the yeoman to the supply folks to the maintainers, the rescue swimmers, everybody here knows that what they're doing absolutely helps save lives. I'm extremely proud to be a part of Air Station New Orleans. It's truly the people that make Air Station New Orleans incredibly special. It's a family vibe. I think it's a, it's a very close air station. I love the people here. I love to work with people here. Well, they're the best. <laughs>